Hi, my name is Jim Brosnan. I'm a turf grass professor at the University of Tennessee. And today we're gonna to walk through some of our ongoing trial work looking at POA control in ultra dwarf Bermuda grass. So when we think about control and POA in an ultra dwarf Bermuda grass putting green, it's a pretty lengthy endeavor. You know, typically we're looking for protection from sometime in early September all the way through April of the following year. That can be a 200 day period or more. A thoughtful herbicide program can certainly help for that. In this video, we're gonna walk through several different herbicide programs that have been tested at the University of Tennessee and highlight some strengths and weaknesses of each. The first plot that you can see here, this is a non-treated check plot. This is a Tiff Eagle Ultra Dwarf Bermuda grass surface with a heavy infestation of Poa annua. You can see the upright clump growth of the Poa annua intermixed with this Tiff Eagle as it's emerging from winter dormancy. Our second plot here, this is a plot that received two applications of Anderson's crabgrass and goosegrass control. That may sound a little counterintuitive with crabgrass and goosegrass in a POA trial, but the active ingredients, benzalide and oxidiazon, both have activity on POA annua. Uh, here, as we sit here on the day of this video in late March, overall control is not perfect, but I think it's important to keep in mind that that treatment provided us adequate control for well over uh, 80 days throughout the fall, we just need a little bit more residual to get us all the way through uh, to the end of the POA season. Our next treatment here is one that many golf course superintendents in the state inquired about going into the 2023 POA season. This is an application of benzalide uh, that was applied on September 19th, mixed with an application of Curb SCTNO uh, applied on the same day, September 19th. Those two herbicides went out in one tank as a mixture. And then that was followed four weeks later with the same mixture of benzalide plus Curb again. So two treatments in total. And we can see here, excellent control in late March. Our next treatment here, this is a little bit interesting. We've done work where we have looked at Trimit, uh, a plant growth regulator, uh, to see how additive it could be in a POA control program in Bermuda grass fairways. In this trial, we took it to a Bermuda grass putting green uh, to see what the response would be. Uh, so here, this is an application of Trimit at 32 ounces per acre. And for the next series of treatments, when we look at applications in October, those are all around uh, a model that was developed at the University of Tennessee to identify when POA seedlings are emerging from the soil. We can see here the overall control from this treatment, not very high in a putting green environment, and we have some setbacks in terms of our Tiff Eagle emergence from dormancy. Next treatment uh, has become somewhat of an industry standard uh, over the past several years. This is a mixture of Katana, which is an ALS inhibiting herbicide uh, with Curb. This is a single application, again, using our POA emergence model developed at UT to time the treatment. And one application of that herbicide mixture uh, has provided excellent control uh, here later on in the season. So our next treatment here would be something that is not labeled nor recommended by the University of Tennessee. We included this in this experiment because many golf course superintendents were asking about this use pattern. What you're looking at in this plot, this is an application of Roundup Pro at a very low rate at five fluid ounces per acre, and it was applied to a dormant Tiff Eagle Green on January 29th. The concept is, well, if the Tiff Eagle Green is dormant, is that enough Roundup that could give us control of POA without injuring the Tiff Eagle? When we look at this plot, we can see that the rate's probably too low. We've got a heavy infestation of POA in this plot. We don't have the control that we would have hoped for. Really no ill effects so far on Tiff Eagle emergence from dormancy, but not what we would want as something to control POA in a putting green. The next treatment that you'll see, uh, this is an application of reward. So this is another non-selective herbicide. This would have been applied January 29th. Something again, that's not a labeled application, but what several golf course superintendents have inquired about. The rate of reward in this plot is 32 ounces per acre. This was applied on January 29th. Our POA control here is excellent, but we have a pretty significant delay in our Tiff Eagle emergence from winter dormancy. 
Our next treatment here is very similar. Uh, this is a reward. Again, this wouldn't be something that's labeled, but something that superintendents are inquiring about. So we're investigating the use pattern. And we can see our POA control from an, uh, January 29th application of reward, really high, but again, uh, pretty detrimental to our TIF Eagle emergence from dormancy. And then the final treatment here, uh, this is another reward concept. What we've done is we've mixed reward uh, with recognition, which is a, a herbicide that contains trifloxysulfuron as an active ingredient, and then a herbicide safener. As that product was developed, there were efforts looking at mixtures of recognition with other active ingredients, and we saw enhanced turf safety. So our concept was, could we mix this with reward and have enhanced turf safety to our ultra dwarf Bermuda grass in this experiment and still get POA control, knowing that reward has activity on POA, as does the trifloxysulfuron that's in recognition. We look from a control standpoint here in late March. Our control is excellent, uh, but we don't have that safety piece we were hoping for. Our TIF Eagle emergence from dormancy is certainly not where we would want it to be. Now, next treatment kind of plays on that Roundup concept uh, that we looked at in an earlier plot. This is a mixture of Katana applied with Roundup Pro at five fluid ounces per acre. So we're spiking our Katana application with another AI that we know is active on POA to give us a little bit more of a robust response. The other thing to note here is that this application was made in late January. You know, typically, if we're going to use a herbicide like Katana for POA control, it's either going to be right at our emergence model timing in mid-October or something that would go out in mid-spring, you know, around this time of year in, in mid to late March for post-emergence activity. Not common to see Katana applications go out uh, in Tennessee in, in late January, but when we add in that glyphosate with it, we get a really nice control response and we have no ill effects on our Bermuda grass as it's emerging from winter dormancy. Next treatment we'll look at, again, I need to be specific here. This is not a labeled application. This is one that uh, golf course superintendents have asked about over the preceding season, so we included it in our tests. This is an application of Sencor uh, to Tiff Eagle Bermuda grass. Application was on March 4th, and we can see so far our response on our POA here in this plot is not what, what we would hope for. 10 ounces per acre of Sencor is something that we would hope give us a little bit more activity, and we're not seeing it so far in this plot. Next treatment, again, this is uh, something that would not be labeled, but something superintendents are inquiring about. This is an application of Sencor tank mixed with recognition. Uh, again, recognition is a herbicide that has uh, trifloxysulfuron as an active ingredient, uh, as well as a herbicide safener, metcamifen. Our hope was that that would safen the Sencor to the Tiff Eagle Bermuda grass and give us adequate pole control, given that we would have two different modes of action applied to the surface with that combination. We look at this plot again, sprayed March 4th, not the level of POA control that we would hope for, yet no ill effects on our Tiff Eagle Ultra Dwarf Bermuda grass so far. Next plot here, this is a revolver application. One could make a case this has uh, become an industry standard and it's one of the reasons why we have so much sulfonylurea resistance in Ultra Dwarf Bermuda grass greens. His revolver has been used along with others in that class of chemistry for some time. This application was made March 4th, yet to see uh, a lot of activity out of this treatment, but typically with our group two herbicides, it takes at least three weeks, if not longer, to see a control response. And so with an application on March 4th, we're pretty early on to see what this revolver application would uh, typically do for us. And our final treatment here, uh, this is an interesting one. I was fortunate enough to be the keynote speaker at the Australian Turfgrass Managers Conference in June of 2023. And many in Australia had spoke highly about using a product called PoaCheck. Active ingredient is endothol. We decided to put that in our trials here at UT just to see what it would do. And so far it's done really well. This is two applications of PoaCheck one January 29th 
and then an application two weeks later on Valentine's Day on February 14th. We have no ill effects on our Tiff Eagle Bermuda grass as it's emerging from winter dormancy. So that's a, that's a, a robust look at all of the programs that we uh, have tested for POA control and ultra dwarf Bermuda grass uh, putting greens uh, this season. If any of you that are watching this have programs that you'd like to see tested in the future, please let us know. We will do our best to uh, work them into future trials. Thanks for listening.